In 2017, Kevin Lee was primed to be the next breakout star of the UFC. A combination of physical prowess and a strong trainer left touting him as a future lightweight champion. Only for tragedy, inconsistency, and the weight of expectation to turn him into one of the sport's biggest what-ifs. Today we look at how the Motown phenom spluttered and stalled his way out of the UFC. Welcome to the INC, and today we ask, what happened to Kevin Lee? When he made his UFC debut in February 2014, Kevin Lee represented a new breed of MMA fighter. After going 37-0 with Grand Valley State University, Lee decided to forego a promising wrestling career to transition to mixed martial arts, competing in regional promotions in Canada and Indiana where he built a 7-fight winning streak. The run of form soon caught the eye of the UFC, who made Lee one of the youngest fighters on their roster at just 20 years. Lee was given a baptism of fire when he took on Ultimate Fighter finalist Al Iaquinta at UFC 169. Lee's tenure got off to the worst start as Iaquinta dropped the Grand Rapids fighter in the first minute, and while Lee made the fight competitive with his wrestling, Lee ultimately succumbed to a unanimous decision. It was during this event, however, that Lee first got into contact with the Extreme Couture training camp, which guided the majority of his career. Over the next three years, Lee became a fixture of the fight night circuit, winning eight of his next nine fights with many advocating for him as a future UFC champion. While there were setbacks during this time, including a first round knockout to Leonardo Santos, Lee's evolution from fight to fight became quickly evident, a progression fueled by the fighter's relationship with Extreme Couture head coach Robert Follis. During his run, Lee became known for his willingness to face all comers, taking a number of low reward, high risk matches which further raised his stock. At Fight Night Belfast, Lee became the first man in five years to beat highly touted Russian Magomed Mustafaev before ending the seven fight winning streak of Brazilian veteran Francisco Trinaldo. In June 2017, Lee earned his first UFC main event against Michael Chiesa at Fight Night Oklahoma. The match attracted little fan interest when first announced, but that all changed when the two men came to blows during the pre-fight press conference. I'm gonna smack the fuck out of you right now, don't you ever talk about my mom. Yeah, 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 what's going on? Lee would overwhelm Chiesa to win a grappling heavy bout by first round submission. But the victory was overshadowed by Chiesa's insistence that referee Mario Yamasaki stop the fight prematurely. While Chiesa's protest continued, Lee took his place in the lightweight top 10. With an increasingly competitive title picture, Lee was quickly positioned as a divisional wildcard, leading fighter turned hot take specialist Chael Sonnen to infamously ask, Where does Kevin Lee fit in all this? By October of that year, the UFC had grown tired of Conor McGregor's grandstanding and created an interim title for the lightweight division. And with several fighters injured or coming off of losses, Lee was chosen to take on Tony Ferguson in the main event of UFC 216. Lee started the fight stronger by neutralizing Ferguson's ground game and landing heavy ground and pound to close out the opening round. But the pace brought on by his opponent soon took its toll on Lee's conditioning, leading to a Ferguson submission late in the third round. Oh, it. It. Tony he went out. He went out. Despite the disappointment, Lee's defenders were quick to write off the loss as a learning experience, the first round serving as evidence that Lee already had the tools to make a future run at the belt. This was further emboldened days later, when Lee revealed he suffered a staph infection days before the fight, which had an adverse effect on his already tough weight cuts. Lee immediately looked to bounce back from the loss, but in December 2017, tragedy struck when head coach Robert Follis claimed his own life at the age of 48. Follis had been instrumental in Lee's transformation from prospect into title challenger, and in the years following his passing, Lee admitted the impact losing his mentor had on his career. It took me a long time to understand why. Uh, and, you know, a part of you wants to blame yourself. You know, I'm like, especially coming off the, the fight with Tony Ferguson, I'm like, man, if I had won that fight, is that the reason why? Or is that, it made me understand a lot more even about myself. So I, I took it in stride and took it as a, 
Not necessarily a positive, but I took it as best as I could. Lee's first match without his coach came against Edson Barbosa at Fight Night Atlantic City. And while Lee claimed a fifth round stoppage over his veteran opponent, the win was marred by Lee missing the lightweight limit and the most infamous chicken dance in MMA history. Oh, spinning out kick! Here that wall was Kevin Lee! Oh my goodness! The performance was enough to put the wheels back on the Kevin Lee hype train, and in December 2018, he was rewarded with a fourth main event against his old rival, Ally Akinta. The man who handed Lee his first career loss way back in 2014. The fight served as the final fight in the UFC's seven year deal with Fox. And viewers were treated to a back and forth brawl, with Lee controlling the early stages before Ayakinta mounted a strong rally in the final rounds. Conditioning would once again prove Lee's downfall, as Ayakinta claimed the unanimous decision and proved his showing four years earlier was anything but a fluke. After three straight fights hampered by his weight cut, Lee made a one-off move to welterweight to face Rafael Dos Anjos at Fight Night Rochester, where the former lightweight champion neutralized Lee's wrestling game before claiming a fourth round submission. Going to 170 had done little to ease Lee's tendency of gassing out during fights, and fundamental changes were needed if the Michigan native wished to revive his career. At the advice of UFC commentator Joe Rogan, Lee relocated to Montreal to train with coach Faraz Zahabi, the man responsible for George St. Pierre's reign of dominance a decade earlier. The move also saw Lee go back to his low reward, high risk matchmaking, as the Motown phenom returned to lightweight to face Gregor Gillespie at UFC 244. Gillespie was one of the UFC's most touted prospects, boasting a 13-0 record and one of the most smothering wrestling games in the sport. It took just two and a half minutes for Lee to reintroduce himself to the weight class. The knockout, added with his new training, reignited interest in Lee but the man himself remained unsure over where in the sport his future lay. In the coming months, Lee reiterated his desire for the UFC to create a 165-pound division, believing he and other fighters were at a disadvantage due to being undersized at welterweight, but too big to get down to 155. An argument which gained further mileage when he missed weight again for his match with Charles Oliveira at Fight Night Brasilia. The show was marred in confusion, as two days before the event, the governor of Brazil's federal district placed a ban on large gatherings due to the COVID-19 global pandemic, meaning Lee and Oliveira's main event would be the first crowdless show in UFC history. Oliveira got the better of Lee during a striking heavy first two rounds, and after Lee lazily shot for a takedown, Oliveira didn't need asking twice. A third round submission condemned Lee to a fourth loss in six fights. After several attempts to book a match with Sean Brady, Lee returned to welterweight against Daniel Rodriguez at the 2021 Ultimate Fighter finale. Lee used his wrestling to claim the opening round against the short notice opponent, only for Rodriguez to open up and rock the much smaller Lee on multiple occasions. Rodriguez continued to pepper Lee throughout the final round, going on to claim the biggest win of his career by unanimous decision. After the fight, Lee was granted a six-month suspension by USADA after testing positive for Adderall, something the fighter claimed he was taking as a medication due to recently diagnosed ADHD. Lee had been set to return in action in February of 2022, but three months before his scheduled return, it was revealed Lee had been released from his UFC contract just four years and seven fights after competing for the company's lightweight title. Kevin Lee can be seen as a cautionary tale for young fighters. While high-risk matchmaking built his reputation short-term, it led to him being constantly booked against top-level competition, many of which exploited the failings of a talented yet still raw fighter. The loss of Robert Follis was also a turning point, with many feeling Lee's development as a fighter stalled without the guidance of his mentor. It's possible Kevin Lee can prove the pundits right and become a future MMA champion, but it's a venture which, for now at least, will take place outside of the octagon. Hey, 
This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.